Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. Welcome to theCUBE, my name is David Godin, I'm your host, and we are here at Spark Day Two. It's the Spark Summit, and I'm flanked by a couple of consultants here from, sorry, analysts from Wikibon. Wait, what? I got to get this straight. Uh, to my left, we have Jim Kabilis, who is our lead analyst for data science. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks, David. And we also have George Gilbert, who is the lead analyst for data science, big data, big data. Big data and analytics. I'll get this right eventually. So Hopefully why don't we start with Jim. Jim, uh, just kicking off the show here today, wanted to get some preliminary thoughts before we really jump into the rest of the day. What are the big themes that we're going to hear about? Yeah, today is the Enterprise Day at Spark Summit. So Spark for the Enterprise. Yesterday was focused on Spark, the ex evolution and extension of Spark to support more native development of deep learning as well as um, speeding up uh, Spark to support sub millisecond latencies. But today is all about Spark in the enterprise, really what I've, I call wrapping DevOps around Spark, making it more productionizable, supportable. Um, the, the Databricks serverless announcement, though it was announced yesterday, the press release went up, they're going uh, into some depth right now in the keynote about serverless. And really serverless is um, all about uh, providing an in-cloud Spark, essentially a sandbox for teams of developers um, to scale up and scale out um, enough resources to do the modeling, the training, the deployment, the iteration, the evaluation of Spark jobs um, in a, essentially a 24 by seven, multi-tenant, fully supported environment. So it's really about driving this, this, this continuous Spark development and iteration process um, into a 24 by seven uh, model in the enterprise, which is really, what's happening is that data scientists, Spark developers are becoming an operational function that businesses are, are building you know, strategic infrastructure around things like recommendation engines and e-commerce environments, absolutely demand 24 by seven resilient Spark team-based collaboration environments, which is really what the, um, what the serverless uh, announcement's all about. So you're getting increasing demand on mission critical yes. problems, so that yeah. optimization is a big deal. Yeah, data science is not just an R&D function, it's an operational mm -hmm. IT uh, function as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's all about. Awesome, well, let's go to, uh, to George. I, I saw you watching the keynote, I think you're still watching it again <laughs> this morning. So taking notes feverishly, uh, what were some of the things that stuck out to you uh, from the keynote speakers this morning? There are some things that are going to sort of bleed over from yesterday where we can explore some more. Um, uh, we're going to have on the show um, the chief architect, Reynolds Chin, and the CEO, Ali Godsi. Um, and some of the things that, you know, we'll, we'll want to understand is how the scope of applications that are appropriate for Spark um, are expanding. We've, we got sort of unofficial guidance yesterday that you know, just because Spark doesn't handle um, key value stores or databases all that tightly right now, that doesn't mean it won't in the, in the future. On the Apache Spark side through better APIs and on the Databricks side, perhaps custom integration. And the significance of that is that you can open up a whole class of operational apps, apps that run your business, and that now incorporate you know, rich analytics as well. Um, another thing that, that we'll want to be asking about is, um, keying off what Jim was saying, you know, now that this becomes not a managed service where you just take the labor that the you know, uh, end customer was applying to get the thing running, but it's now automated and you don't even know the infrastructure, we'll want to know what does that mean for the edge, you know, where we're, where we're doing analytics close to internet of things and people. And, um, you know, sort of, if there has to be a new configuration of Spark to work with that. And then of course, you know, what do we do about the whole data, data science process and the DevOps for data science when you have machine learning you know, distributed across the cloud and edge and on-prem. In fact, I know we have Pepper Data coming on right after this, Ali Munchie, who might be able to talk about that exact uh, DevOps in terms yeah. of performance optimization in, in a distributed Spark environment, yeah. Mm -hmm. And George, I want to follow up with that. We had Matt Fryer from Hotels.com. He's going to be on our show later. Right. He was on the keynote stage this morning. 
He talked about going all cloud, all Spark, and how data science is even a competitive advantage for Hotels.com. What do you want to dig into when we get him on the show? Um, that's, a, that's a really good question because, you know, if you look at, at business strategy, you don't really build a, a, sustaining, a sustainable advantage just by doing one thing better than everyone else. That's easier to pick off. The sustainable um, strategic advantages come from um, not just doing one thing better than everyone else, but many things and then orchestrating their improvement over time. And I'd like to dig into how they're going to do that. Because remember, like Hotels.com is, is the internet equivalent descendant of the original travel reservation systems, mm -hmm. which did confer competitive advantage on the early um, uh, architects and deployers of, of that technology. Great, and, and Pepper Data, I want to come back, we're going to have them on the show here in just a mm -hmm. moment. Uh, what would you like to learn from them? What do you think will benefit the community the most? Actually, it's uh, keying off something George said, I'd like to get a sense for how you optimize Spark deployments in a radically distributed IOT edge environment. Mm -hmm. um, whether they've got, they've got any plans or what, what their thoughts are in terms of the challenges there. As more of the intelligence gets pushed to the edge, much of that will be in machine learning and deep learning models built into Spark. What are the challenges there? I mean, if you've got thousands to millions of endpoints that are all autonomous and intelligent and they're all running Spark, um, just what are the orchestration requirements? What are the, the resource uh, management requirements? How do you monitor end to end an environment like that and optimize the, the passing of data and uh, the, the transfer of uh, of, of sort of the control flow or orchestration across all those disparate points. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 30 seconds now, what do you think the audience, why should the audience tune in to our show today? What are they going to get? I think what they're going to get is a really good sense for how the emerging best practices for optimizing Spark in a distributed fog environment out to the edge, um, where not just the edge devices, but everything, all nodes, will incorporate machine learning and deep learning. Uh, they'll, they'll get a sense for what's being done today, what the tooling is to enable DevOps in that kind of an environment, um, as well as uh, the sort of the emerging best practices for compressing more of these algorithms uh, and the data itself, um, as well as doing training uh, in a radically federated environment. I'm, I'm hoping to hear some from some of the, uh, the vendors who are on the, uh, the show today. Fantastic, and George, closing thoughts in the opening segment. Um, <laughs> 30 seconds. Close, closing talk, <laughs> opening segment. Um, I, you know, like, like Jim, it's, we want to think about Spark holistically, and it's traditionally been best positioned as sort of this, as they acknowledged, as, as Matei acknowledged yesterday, sort of this offline branch, you know, of analytics mm -hmm. that you apply to Data Lake um, uh, sort of repository that you accumulated, and now we want to see it put into production but to do that, you need more than just what Spark is today. Mm -hmm. You know, you need better, um, you need basically a database or key value kind of option so that you know, you're storing your work as it goes along so you can go back and analyze it, mm -hmm. um, either you know, s simple analysis or complex analysis. So mm -hmm. I want to hear about that. I want to hear about the, um, their plans for IoT you know, Spark is kind of a heavyweight environment, yeah. so you're probably not going to put it in the boot of your car, you know, or at least, <laughs> you know, not, not likely anytime soon. Um, intelligent Edge. I mean, Microsoft to build a few weeks ago was really deep on Intelligent Edge. HP, who were doing their show, actually, I think it's in Vegas, right, today, week, Discover? Yeah. They're also uh, big on Intelligent Edge. In fact, we had somebody from on the show yesterday from HP going into some depth on that. I want to hear uh, what uh, Databricks has to say on that theme. Yeah, and which part of the edge? Is it the gateway, you know, the edge yeah. gateway, which is really a slim down server, or the edge device, which could be, you know, a 32 meg RAM network card? Yeah. All right, well, gentlemen, I uh, appreciate the uh, little insight here before we get started today, and we're just getting started. Uh, thank you both for being on the show, and thank you for watching theCUBE. We'll be back in a little while with uh, our CEO from Databricks. Thanks for watching.